going to go ahead and introduce Jim Grant, who's going to be getting us started with WordPress security. Uh, Jim is an accomplished sales professional turned full-time entrepreneur with business endeavors in online retail, social media, <coughs> consulting, marketing, and web development with 30 plus years of experience in business and technology. He helps clients navigate the waters of digital media to reach their target market on the internet and drive increased customer revenue and develop new customers. He is the owner of Simply Creative Media LLC, where he helps small businesses get found, get social, and get beautiful on the, on the web. SCM takes clients' unique value proposition and leverages the latest tools and techniques to build, grow, and measure their online efforts. Uh, most importantly to us, Jim has been one of the leading organizers in the KC WordPress community and has spearheaded WordCamps for over six years. Uh, thanks, Jim, for all of your time on our behalf. Thanks. Without further ado. Thank you. So hopefully, oh, here we go. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, it's way more than 30 years. I was at my 40th reunion last night till 1 a.m. So <laughs> if I lose my voice, <clears throat> um, that's why. So I got an exciting announcement. Um, I'll pass these around. And if you have a business card or want to just put your email, um, maybe phone number, or however we can get in touch with you, um, Word Fence, where are they? There she is, Kathy. They are giving away um, uh, a free year of pro, premium, get that right. So you can just pass those around. And, um, I was gonna have you put it on the survey, but I figured then nobody could say anything bad about me, <laughs> <laughs> which is okay. Um, so I'm Jim. <clears throat> And uh, I love organizing WordCamp. We have a lot of fun. So everybody had a good time. Yeah. 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 Um, so you're in the security session, right? Everybody, okay. Um, why security? Um, so there's three main reasons uh, you want to secure your website. Um, confidentiality. Um, you may have information on your website, customer records, um, credit cards, please don't, um, but information that hackers are trying to get a hold of that has value, that may use it now or later. Um, your integrity, which is a big one. So if your site's been hacked, you make the news or you find a porn page on your website, <laughs> something horrible. Um, it doesn't do much for the integrity of your brand, your company, et cetera. And uh, obviously availability. If you're hacked and you're down, um, you're not doing business. Uh, I have a lot of e-commerce clients and they get really touchy when they're not taking orders. <coughs> Although none of my clients get hacked. Well, the ones that get hacked come to me and then their clients. Um, so why does a hacker bother messing with my site? Does anybody wonder that? Or just just they can. Yeah. <laughs> there are a few of those. Um, but primarily it's about the dollars. Um, they're trying to find an angle to use your resources uh, to make money somehow. So this little list of things they may do, sometimes they're after um, traffic. So they are putting links, redirecting things to get your traffic to their website. Um, pharma is still a big one. Everybody asks me what that is. Um, Cialis, Viagra, those, they can't advertise anymore. Um, so they advertise by getting spam links um, that way. That's what a pharma hack is. Uh, Black Hat SEO. Um, which is just basically injecting uh, links on your site so they can get traffic, click-throughs redirected to their own websites. Um, those can be kind of insidious. I had a client a couple of years ago, 
Um, if you were in Kansas City, site looked fine. If you were in another area geographically, site did not look fine. So sometimes they get pretty tricky, so you can't tell you've been hacked. Um, hacktivism, I haven't seen too many of those lately, but that's, you know, you've been hacked by the Serbian National Army <laughs> or whatever it might be. Um, drive by downloads. They want a link on your site that when you click it, um, you get malware or a payload or uh, one lately has been uh, mm. software that may either infect your site or your own machine to mine cryptocurrency, which get deposited in mm. their account, of course. Um, hidden pages, same intent. They want to use your server to serve their, uh, could be something as simple as an e-commerce page, affiliate pages, anything that makes them money. If they do that million, millions of times on websites, they make a lot of money. Um, email spam, use your site for sending out email. Um, and then your resources. Um, maybe you've got a, an account with three gigabytes of space. They're looking for places to store things. Um, use your bandwidth to serve that. Um, I think that's all of them. Seems like they had another one I wanted to mention, but that's why they're doing it. Um, so, <clears throat> where are the weaknesses? Why are you getting hacked? Um, three main things I'm going to cover leaked passwords, um, software vulnerabilities, and that's WordPress, plugins, could even be the browser or other things related, but we're going to talk about what we can control on WordPress. And your hosting. Um, so, I'm sorry to tell you, most of it's your fault. <laughs> um, social engineering, leaked passwords, uh, that type of thing is really the most common way people are getting access to your things. They do that through several. Um, I know when I started hanging out in coffee shops 10 years ago working, um, Facebook wasn't even encrypted. It was really common to sit in a coffee shop and have somebody sniffing the traffic on the Wi-Fi, log into your Facebook and have all kinds of fun because it was not encrypted. Uh, so public Wi-Fi obviously can be a problem. Also, if you have your PC set to do file sharing, things like that, you're on public Wi-Fi, people are going to be sitting there in the corner poking on your laptop. Or at one client I had that had a coffee shop sitting outside in a truck. <laughs> uh, it happens. Um, social engineering. Uh, that's where somebody sends you an email, says it's Wells Fargo, something's going on with your account, you click on it, they trick you into giving information. Um, this can be very bad. I had a buddy uh, with uh, 30K of Bitcoin in an account, and he wasn't paying any attention. Somebody sent him a note, said they, something was wrong with his key. I can't believe he fell for it. <laughs> sent his key via email. Oh, no. Bitcoin was gone in five minutes. Oh, um, yeah. Um, sending the passwords in the clear. So how many, I have clients do this to me all the time. I need your WordPress. <coughs> credentials so I can get in your website. They email me their username and password in the same email. Not advisable. So what happens if you're already logged in and you switch from like your private network to a public network? Can they somehow get your passwords that way? If you don't log in well, again? There's always a maybe, but if you're using SSL, uh -huh. that's a, a protection. Um, so that's going to be encrypted. Um, there's always a scenario though when you're switching where you may be in the clear even briefly. Um, do you have a comment, Kathy, about that? I think I have the advantage of having an expert in the room today too. So. Well, once you're authenticated, you're not sending the password across mm. the wire anymore, so that, that authentication okay. still exists yeah. using cookies and whatnot. Yeah. So. Right. No matter what, it's always good to use a VPN when you're using public. Yeah. You have two 
Or if you want Netflix in England on your, no. Um, so yeah, VPNs are great. I use I one. Mom, I'm using my VPN. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've even had some issues to use VPN with the clients. I've got one client has uh, phone operators in uh, Belize and places like that, and we can use VPN to make them appear in the U.S. and use IP phone services. It, it has a lot of advantages. Um, there are, I can't actually name one right now, maybe somebody can help me out if you use them. There are some websites where you can send somebody a password and log in, and it's immediately. Um, like BitDrop, one time, one time secret. One time secret, okay, yeah, I remember that one. So um, I usually have clients um, email me their username or give it to me on the phone and then text me their password, at least it's separate, so they can't connect the two. Um, Software vulnerabilities, so we'll spend a lot of time on these. Plugins, even if they're not turned on. Mm -hmm. Themes, yes, even if they're not turned on. So if you've got plugins and themes you're not using, delete them. Uh, they shouldn't be on your site. Um, WordPress core, I pick on that less and less. They're doing a pretty good job these days of keeping up with security vulnerabilities. Um, but that's the biggest exposure um, with WordPress itself. We'll come back to plugins. There's a lot of exposure there. And your hosting. Um, I think most of the hosting companies have gotten pretty good now because it behooves them to be secure and not have you or anybody else causing a problem, costing them time, resources, and availability. Um, SSL. So, how many think the most important reason you should have SSL on your website is for SEO? Nah. <laughs> it's, uh, matter of fact, well, that's a whole other discussion. Um, it's in order to just encrypt the data from your website to and from your visitor. So, if you're passing information like a login, um, credit card information, even form information now. If you're filling out a form, there's some liability there that you're collecting data um, that you need to make sure it's encrypted. Um, who uses Let's Encrypt certificates? Yeah, so they're pretty available now in most hosting um, and pretty simple to install, so no excuse. Um, to not have SSL because that one's free. Um, there are various levels of SSL certificates. Does anybody want to garner a guess at what they are or why there are levels? Who wonders why there are? Why would I pay for a certificate? Um, Some yeah. of it is insurance. Right, most of it's insurance. Um, if you're doing e-commerce in particular and you have more liability, you may want to buy a certificate that has a higher level of insurance against um, fraud. I don't know, maybe your uh, customer list gets hacked, you get sued for that. They insure that. Um, and the other type of cert is one that actually shows um, your company branding and it will show up, up in the uh, URL bar as simply creative media, padlock, uh, and that trust and branding uh, may be helpful. Um, enforce HTTPS, um, in particular this statement forces the admin to be HTTPS, um, so that eliminates a whole a lot of hosting, I know where I host now, forces all of that um, by default, which is nice. You don't have to remember to go in and add statements like this or to your HT access to force HTTPS. Um, if you're not doing that, someone can still get to your site unencrypted simply by saying HTTP and, instead of HTTPS. So you want to make sure you're forcing 
uh, SSL. Um, use a VPN, we talked about that. So another way to encrypt all your traffic um, that you're sending back and forth. Shared and public computers, we do this a lot here. We come in and maybe share a computer for presentations or whatnot. Um, you may be exposing yourself by logging in on someone else's computer that's being sniffed, um, hacked, or looked at, and inadvertently give away your logins. Um, public computer, <coughs> the library, that kind of thing, too. Um, use secure passwords. Um, I don't know anybody that uses the same password everywhere. <laughs> um, that's a problem. When, and I, has anybody dark web searched themselves for their email address? Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times you get those from your credit card company now. You can get a free search of the dark web and they'll go out and see if there's even your social security number. But if your email address is out there, I know mine is. So there's probably data attached to that. Um, and uh, uh, they may be sitting there waiting to use at some point. Um, so we talked about don't email or text passwords, user IDs, or other unsecure apps, especially not username and password together. At least 12 characters long. Um, length is really important. So which is more secure, a really fancy 10 character password with all, all kinds of characters up or lowercase, or 16 characters that 15 of them are the same and one is different? The longer one. The longer one is more secure. It's harder, takes longer to crack. Mm. And so, it's, so length is important. Um, I use a password manager. It could be a religious debate on which one to use or how secure they are. I use the Chrome password manager. Uh, some people consider that lowest on the list of secure, but it's easy and it works across my phone, you know, my tablet, my laptop, my desktop, so it's handy. Um, limit your admins. I get sites all the time that I take over or am working on or we're rebuilding and I get in there there'll be 26 admins on the, on the uh, website and when you ask them who these people are they don't even know. Um, so make sure um, you're limiting the number of admins on your WordPress website. Um, don't use the user ID admin. Um, it's the first one they will hack at if they're trying your website. Um, most security now will kind of limit the number of login attempts, so it's harder for them to keep trying. Um, but the first one they try is admin, and if you're using, <coughs> if you blog or post, and your user ID is actually your username on the blogs, they'll try those next. So you may want to either hide those or show a different username when you're, as your author name. Use CAPTCHA. Who uses CAPTCHA on their websites now? Everybody. Um, <clears throat> the WordPress, uh, or the Google CAPTCHA is very good. I still recommend version two. Is anybody using version three now? Um, it, it works a little different. It's easier, it's less intrusive, uh, but I have seen some problems with like Gravity Forms and a few other plugins where they're not completely compatible yet. Um, basically, it's the check boxes, I'm not a robot. Um, the new one's even slicker. I don't think you even have to check anything necessarily. You're welcome to ask questions at any point. Um, software vulnerabilities. So number one, update, update, update. So don't let your plugins, your WordPress um, sit around 
eight levels back or a year, <laughs> six months. Um, get in regularly and update your plugins, um, WordPress, and what should you do before you do that? Make a backup. There we go. Been there. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah, suffered that. Um, <clears throat> Plug-in updates that go wrong are a little easier to resolve, but if you update core WordPress and you have a problem, you can't roll it back. Um, well, you can, but it's a manual process. Um, don't use pirated software or suspicious free themes. <laughs> I don't think there's a ton of those suspicious free themes anymore, but I know there are a lot of um, since we're in an open source community, there's a lot of websites where you can get most of the name brand popular plugins for free. Um, sometimes those sites are um, set up to, you're getting the plugin, but you may be getting a payload with it that you didn't expect, um, which could be malicious. Um, limit your exposure by reducing plugins. So, well, the biggest thing I see is somebody will put on five or six plugins, testing out um, calendar, say, and then they'll leave all of them on there, or some of them active. Uh, don't do that. Um, and not all plugins are written by security experts. Actually, most of them are not. <laughs> um, we are an open source community, and anybody can write a plugin. And they may not have any malintent, um, but they may just not be very good coders. They may leave uh, vulnerabilities in database access, all kinds of simple things that they might do. So, um, this isn't a session on picking plugins, but uh, always try and use popular plugins with good reviews um, that have a big install base, a lot of activity on their forum and support so that you get an idea of whether, they're, one, they're supporting it, and two, if there have been any issues. Um, one that I've run into lately is, uh, does anybody use WP Live Chat on their websites? It's the only real native um, chat plugin. So if you want to have chat on your website where people can interact with you. And they had a bunch of vulnerabilities lately even got removed from the repository temporarily. Then they changed the functionality of the plugin. So um, the good news on that is because they're a high profile plugin, it was found right away, they warned everybody. Um, so good support. If that happens with a plugin that's not well supported or updated very often, you may not ever know. Uh, and it could be a, a, a hidden vulnerability like we talked about where they put something on your website you can't see or know what's happening. Um, re uh, remove inactive plugins and themes, we talked about that. Um, I don't do overkill on hardening, but this is another statement you can add to your config file. Disallow file edit, which just turns off the file editing in the dashboard. So you know where you can go and do file edit. I think that's under appearance. I can't remember where it is exactly. But you can edit the config file, your CSS, all those files right in the dashboard. Um, so if you back up, if somebody does get your login credentials, first thing they can do is go into the editor and edit your system files. Um, pretty handy if you're a hacker. <laughs> so turn that off. That's what that statement does. Um, move your WP config file. Um, this gets a little tricky and I've got some resources if you want to contact me about how to do that. Basically, if you move the file, WordPress will find it. So at least it's not where a hacker would expect to see it. And your WP config file has your uh, keys in it and different things that um, if they got access to that, they can hack your website. Um, the most effective technique is a redirect in the WP config file. 
to a protected directory with the actual WP config file that's named something else. Um, and uh, it's pretty easy to do, but there's about eight steps in doing that. So if you're really, really paranoid, you can start doing this kind of hardening techniques. Um, don't use the default database prefix WP underscore. That's just another example of it's the first prefix they try when they're trying to log into <coughs> the database remotely. Um, so you're just eliminating or making it harder for them to guess your database name. Um, don't share databases among multiple sites um, unless you're using multi-site, different story. Um, I have had some clients that have two or three sites. They're all using the same MySQL database on their cPanel. So if one site gets hacked, they now have access to all three sites. Um, your hosting. Uh, shared hosting has more exposure, um, cross-contamination. So does everyone know how shared hosting works? You basically have a big um, server. They put all the websites on there in the same software space they're, so they're all executing together so if one gets hacked uh, they can see all the other sites in that server space so it's less secure because of that um, now i will tell you i have most of my sites in shared server space so it doesn't scare me uh, but that is the risk um, and Practically speaking, you know, if a site gets hacked in your shared server space, it could cause performance issues and lots of other things that you may suffer because of somebody else's issue. Um, so you can add a VPS account, virtual private server. That's where your websites execute in only their own space on the server. Um, so if you get hacked or somebody else gets hacked, it doesn't affect your server space. Um, I have found lately that most of the hosting companies are getting really good at security. Um, uh, it costs them money when they're fixing problems or performance is down or they go offline. Um, so they have an interest in making sure there's no problems. Um, I know my hosting company emails me pretty regularly we found an old plugin on this account, or whatever it might be, um, so that you can clean it up. And if you don't clean it up, we're going to change it in three days. So uh, they're very proactive. Um, those are some questions to check on your hosting. Um, are they using? Uh, I have one client that has to use a uh, because of some backend software, an older server. So we have issues with older PHP, things like that. It can be a problem. Um, so check that. Uh, do they have a security status blog? That's one a lot of them don't like to do because they don't like to admit when they have a problem. I've called up multiple times. I know they have a problem. What do you mean? Nothing's wrong. Everything's running fine. So they may not want to admit it. So if they have a, a status blog, that's, that's nice. Um, we talked about SSL, do they provide Let's Encrypt, which is free. Um, do they offer WordPress specific hosting? So that tends to be um, more aware of what can go wrong with WordPress, so they have a lot more in place to protect WordPress. Um, I think a lot of these are forcing it by default now, but when you FTP in, you should use SSH encryption if you can, um, so that you're not transferring files in the clear where they can be looked at. Okay, my biggest security secret. Have a backup. Um, if you get hacked, um, restoring the backup is easy. Um, How many store um, 
customer data or anything like that on their website. E-commerce sites, okay. So there are some considerations there about how often you back up and so forth. Um, so store offsite copies. Every time, I use Backup Buddy, I'm a big fan. Um, most of the backup solutions are fine. They do a great job. Um, I like uh, one of the features in Backup Buddy. I store three copies, uh, a local copy that's just on the server so I can get to it quickly. Uh, I have an email a copy, and I have a copy that goes to, um, well, now they're going to my Google Drive. In the past, I stored those on S3 Amazon storage. So now we've got three backups in three places and uh, redundancy. Um, backup as often as your data changes. So if you blog once a year like I do, <laughs> um, you only need one backup a year probably. If you're doing e-commerce, you have a lot of transactions all day, you may want to back up hourly. Um, it just really depends on how often and how much can you afford to go back and reconstruct your data. Um, keep older backups. Um, I keep a rolling seven day backup on most active sites and then I keep three or four months in arrears um, at least one backup. Um, the reason is you may have been hacked for six months and not know it. Um, so the alternative, uh, if you don't have a good backup to go back to, is cleaning the site, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and you can just automate that and schedule it so you don't have to mess with it. Um, don't try and store a 500 meg backup every day for 45 days. Your hosting company will probably call it. Um, so, security plugins. So, there's um, a couple of types of security plugins and the things they do. Uh, monitoring is one area. Um, so don't confuse monitoring with actually protecting your website. Uh, so these are primarily monitoring tools. WP Scan, uh, most people miss the Google Search Console. They will give you some information on, um, well, even if they blacklisted you and you didn't notice. Um, <laughs> but they'll give you warnings about things that uh, may need attention on your website. Jetpack Protect and Securi, which is a security plugin um, that their free plugin only scans. It doesn't really offer any protection. You have to go to their pro version to get real protection. And uh, I didn't put it on here because they're better than this, but WordFence also monitors. <laughs> um, but they're in the next uh, class, which I call Defense. So. These plugins actually do something proactive to defend your website uh, against hacking. So, Vault Press, uh, WordFence, which I was embarrassed to find out an hour or so ago when I was talking to Kathy. Um, two factor authentication, so being able to log in your website and then get a text with a code so it double checks that you are who you are is now a default feature in WordFence, so that's very nice. Uh, iTheme Security, All-in-One WP, Google Authenticator, another two-factor option, uh, Key Two-Factor Authentication, uh, Bulletproof Security, I haven't used that one for a long time, it was, it was pretty clunky and technical, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, a new one, which I know nothing about, but they are a sponsor at WordCamp, so I feel obligated uh, to mention them. WP Server Security with C. I have not uh, looked at their product or tried it yet. Um, and then Malcare, which is an interesting solution. Um, I know someone who uses it. They have a technique where they actually make a copy of your website on their server, do all the scanning, and then remediation and then 
uh, blow it back onto your server once it's fixed. Uh, interesting concept. Do not install all of these, or even probably more than one, because you'll get overprotected or conflicts, especially with firewalls, things like that. Um, you could cause yourself uh, headaches or even lock yourself out of your own site. <laughs> Um, so, if you do, if you have been hacked for six months, don't have a backup, didn't know it, you need some remediation. So that's when I usually get called for uh, companies that do it, like WordFence, Security, I don't know who else is out there, but some people will do um, hand remediation of your site. These are the basic steps. Um, wipe the environment clean, including starting a new database, uh, restore your backup, um, review every file, looking for files that shouldn't be there mostly, um, replace everything you can with new copies, um, change all of your passwords and your salts, so that gets into getting in the config file and actually, um, or the database and changing your passwords manually. Um, I have successfully used, and I mentioned them, Eli Anti-Malware. Um, they have a pretty good scanner that actually does some remediation. It may not do all of it, so you, you need to check. Uh, but I have had it save me a lot of time cleaning up uh, a hack site. Uh, Malcare, I mentioned um, securing um, to get all of their protection um, firewall, um, uh, cleaning, monitoring, remediating, requires a paid service with them. Check your cron jobs. That's another one folks miss occasionally. I've had clients, their site was hacked, they cleaned it all up, and uh, two days later it's reinfected again exactly like it was, and there was a cron job running in the background says, hey, once the site's cleaned up or every two days, whatever it is, reinfect the website. Um, really handy. Goodness, that's it. And I'm hurt. No, I'm right on time. So questions? What? Um, so when we were talking about uh Searching security on uh, Google and being an explorer, all that. Um, there's an extension people can use. It's uh, called uh, Gap Aid. It's uh, also a virus scanner on a computer on PC. And it's a free extension that you can get all over Google and everything. Okay. What's it called? Uh, Gap Aid. Oh, Gap Aid, sure. Um, I have, that's another, I've actually found viruses hidden in websites that way. Just download the file contents <coughs> and scan it with something like McAfee or yeah, probably. any of the virus scanners, malware scanners, and they will identify bad files in your structure also. Do you have any clients that uh, set up two domains, one just specifically to administer the WordPress site that writes to the database, and then another just for the content delivery? I don't. Any comment on that technique from the expert? What did he say? So, setting up two environments, one specifically for administering the site, content management, and then one for specifically just delivering the content. So, like admin.mysite.com, and then another environment, just mysite.com, to kind of separate out the administration part, so you can add more security on it. Yeah. Uh, kind of, but they would all, they would both use the same data, mm -hmm. so it's not tech, it wouldn't be a staging site really. So it's really just insulating the slash WP admin that's not there. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. The and there's a couple of ways to do that also. Um, I usually don't recommend those. It's overkill in my book. If somebody's trying that hard, there's something else going on maybe. But. Um, any thoughts about? There's a hosting provider, um, well, it's in the in Israel called Strata, and what they do is, you, is WordPress, but everything that is coming HTTP requests to that site is getting a static site. So even if you have vulnerabilities in your site, those requests can't see it. Um, so that's an interesting way. And there's also something called Headless uh, CMS. 
which basically downloads your site into the browser, and then the person interacting with the site is interacting there, and, and that's another method of like having a really fast site and also sort of hiding vulnerabilities. But the easiest thing to do is just keep everything updated. The easiest thing to do is to you know put a firewall in front that catches things like SQL injections and the standard you know vanilla malware types of attacks, and and you're going to be okay if you have a good firewall and you're keeping everything updated. You going through all these extra steps that make working with WordPress harder don't need to happen. I don't want to put him on the spot, but haven't you all done some headless casting? We're, we're tinkering. We have a, a very uh, non-functional. Not for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, theme yeah. I, right. I thought y'all have been so, doing some work in that. Yeah. yeah. We actually may have a. Uh, I think we've been talking about at the meetup, doing a meetup on the headless uh, CMS. So. Now you've got to attend. As long as you do the basic WordPress security best practices of updating the password. Yep. not giving out the information, you're going to stay as secure as you can as long as the plugin offers are updating. However, any plugin can have a vulnerability even as high as Yoast has had them before. True, yeah. Um, I will say though, um, and I mentioned earlier, I've never had a client that I'm either managing or have built get hacked. Um, and I put word fence on every one of those sites, and I wasn't paid to say that today. Um, and keep everything updated. And the other thing that, um, and there's a couple of really good blogs out there, but word fence does send that. Uh, I bet I get daily emails with what's going on, what, what are the latest plugins that have had issues. Um, very good source of, uh, and I recommend getting on a list like that so you get warnings about bad rogue plugins, that kind of thing. Um, so a lot of this is like pretty overwhelming to someone who's just starting out. Like, I don't know, I mean, what do you think like the top three things are like a new person starting out on a... Yep, do. so install a good monitoring and defense plugin, mm -hmm. um, back up your site, and uh, make sure your host is responsible. Um, and some of the bigger names aren't necessarily. So if you want an opinion on that, I'll yes. tell you offline. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm probably okay, because I think I'm using the same way you are. Cool. <laughs> Any other questions? Who are you hmm? using passwords? I use A2 hosting in Michigan. Oh, you do? Okay. I've been, and they've become very <laughs> secure, proactive lately, especially. I don't Is know SiteGround why. okay? Yes. Okay. My opinion. Just don't put like 30 sites in your C panels and then forget about kind of them. Yeah. It happens a lot. <laughs> don't put uh, 30 sites in your C panel and then ignore 10 of them and forget them. I've actually had that happen with a very large client that was on some hosting um, that somebody with a data center was doing. And there were like 80 sites on there, and 79 of them were 10 years old. So it was a big problem. You mentioned that uh, most theme developers or plug developers aren't mm -hmm. security experts. People who are developing custom themes or custom plugins, are there resources out there for making sure that your plugins are uh, as secure as you can get them? Great question. I don't know. There's um, yeah. Rips. Rips. Um, I'll tweet this out, but Rips has a. Rips. Uh, yeah, Rips Security has a, actually a code scoring. They have an algorithm where they actually look at the code base um, and and do a scoring system. Okay. So there's some in there that like have a hundred are scored at like a hundred. You don't want those on your site, even if you know there's not like an absolutely known and exploited in the wild vulnerability on it. There's like a risk factor associated with some of the functions that they're using, um, and you know so, so they've got Yoast. Know, every single plugin that's in the repository is in that. So I just have kind of like. Yeah, they have an algorithm that I've never. Um, Code risk dot com and code risk dot com. So you can do a search on the plugin. Let's see. Let's click on Yoast. 
<laughs> I love the oats, actually. I just have a bunch of them. So their code risk factor is nine, which is pretty low. Okay. But you so can put all your the in there. Yeah. It's kind of fun to play with. And then they'll actually give you some metrics, too. Like Yoast has about five million active installs. How many lines of code? So like more complicated plugins, obviously, you have a greater probability. Or they, yeah, these are all they repo. Have to be yeah, these are all okay. repo plugins, okay. not cool. repo. So we're at time, so if you leave me a slip of paper or a business card, just leave it up here. Um, we'll draw one and Kathy will contact you about it. if you're the winner. I don't know. Well, they got them in front. Thank you. Thank you.